Okay, good afternoon everyone. So, thanks for watching sa atong first video regarding sa introduction to animal science. So, for our second topic, actually this second topic is a very very broad topic. So, I will divide it into systems. Depende sa kung unsa kadaghan nga systems ang naa sa animal. So, let's proceed sa atong second topic which is talk about animal anatomy and physiology. So, for the first system na aton i-discuss this time is we're going to talk about integumentary system. So, what is integumentary system? So, commonly, once mag-ingon tag integumentary system, ang isa mga sulod sa atong huna-huna is all about skin. So, technically, yes, that talks about the skin, but if we're talking about human biology or human anatomy and physiology, ang ato lang basihan is skin, hairs, and koko. Pero sa animals, daghan kayo, kayo ng variation, depende sa species. So, for the skin of animals, there are three basic layers. The epidermis, this one. So, this is the outermost layer of the skin of an animal. And the second part is the dermis. So, this dermis. Miss here is the rin na start nga ang layers ng skin is going to be vascularized meaning may mga blood vessels na and then of course there is a subcutaneous la layer nga in application sa animal husbandry usually ang injection site nga dili nga dili mula ho sa muscle or there is what we call commonly known as the subcutaneous injection so dire ni siya nga part gina inject so hopefully mag face to face ta sa ansay to and then makatudlo ko ninyo kung unsa pag magpa-inject sa animals anyway so balik ta sa topic so the skin is an external covering of the body continuous with the exterior membranes of the respiratory urogenital and digestive tracts so for the functions of the skin so, they serve as protection of sensitive tissues. Yes, okay. what would happen to an animal if there is no skin and if it is exposed to sunlight? Of course, the other cells and tissues inside the animal's body will become desiccated or madunot. So, of course, every structure of the body of an animal has its purpose and that's the purpose of the skin, to protect the animal or to protect specifically ang sensitive tissues sa isa ka animal not only that it prevents the penetration of toxic liquids and gases yes kay dira lang danay ang first possible route of entry sa possible pathogen possible toxins and possible chemicals nga pwede maging harmful sa animals next as protects from body from adverse effects of light regulates body temperature of course why nga ang makaregulate man siya sa body temperature. Abe. Okay, so kung namina mo diri karong video, please give me a brief explanation in one to two sentences kung nga nung makaregulate body temperature ang skin. Next, it contains ergosterol which helps to form vitamin D. So, maka vitamin D is one of the vitamins nga known sa ato, uh, not only in animals but also in human. So, example also is vitamin A, B, C. But ang D, aside nga gina-absorb siya sa digestive tract, pero dili na siya possible without the aid from the metabolism coming from the skin. So, not only that, it is also as organ of touch. So, dili ito maka-feel of pain due to nerves nga naa sa skin, nga maka-connect through the brain. And then, mag-send message balik sa skin nga, uy, hapdi kayo ni. So, as a result, mag-reactid ang lawas according sa na-perceive na touch sa skin. Next, it prevents delicate tissues from dying, drying. Just like I said, gayin na. So, for the epidermis, kung i-consider natin into further histological appearance, mo ni siya ang ito, ang photo micrograph of the epidermis so the outermost layer is the stratum corneum this one second layer is the stratum lucidum third is the stratum granulosum the stratum spinosum and the stratum basale so the innermost layer is the stratum basale 
and the outermost layer is the stratum corneum. So actually, strat the sa tanan nga layer sang epidermis, it is mostly the stratum corneus who has dead skin cells. So mao na siyang inyong mga ansa man, inyong mga laki. So mao na siya ang stratum corneum. So next dera is the dermis. So mao na siya ang image nga artistic sketch or artistic view pero mo ni siya ang histological view mo yun yung typical na makita natin sa microscope so aside from which is we're going to talk about the hair so balik to danay di ba may second layer pa sa skin which is the dermis so the dermis contains blood vessel nerves hair follicles muscle fibers and glands so dary ang typical gid nga maka cause primary protection sa aton nga or maka cause maka hatag sa primary protection against harmful physical factors sa outside environment is ang epidermis nga part whereas ang nourish skin area mismo is the dermis nga part kay dito nabutang ang mga vital nga mga parts or organs of the body so balik ta sa second slide so let's talk about Hair. So, mo ni siya ang hair under the microscope. Actually, this is the hair bulb. And then, the ray, mo ni siya ang natawag na ito nga hair follicles. Actually, gin show ni siya according to development. Mo ni, baguhay pa lang. And then, tali-develop na kanina, fully develop na ni siya. So, okay. So, let's proceed na sa specialized integument. Just like giingon ako gahin na Kung mag-talk lang na about human anatomy and physiology, the only integument na makita natin is ang koko, ang skin, and then ang buhok. But in animals, it's a different story. It varies between species to species. For example, this one in the buffalo. So makita natin ng specialized integument, not only the skin, but also ang ilang horns. Actually, ang horns ang ating animal... Actually, is a part gamay gina-cover na sila na hole sa ila na skull. So, the question is, unsa or asa nga specific part sa skull naga-form ang horns sa buffalo? Mawin na siyang aton first question. Dari. And then, second, sa how about sa goats? Asa nga specific part sa skull. So, you need to discover it. May bonus kung magtubag mo. Please PM lang sa ako for bonuses. Makahatag pa nag one point ninyo. Malay natin. Dagahan mo kayong wrong sa inyong module. Pero hopefully wala lang. Hopefully nga dagahan mong na-learn bisan sa pagbasa pa lang. So, balik sa topic. How about sa birds? Actually, sa birds, this is what we call the claws. And then, sa ilang shank, there is specialized integument nga makaprotect sa ila from excessive trauma especially nga modeling main nila ginagamit for protection as well as of getting food especially those mga predatory hawks and then not only that sa birds actually sa birds may harap nang ginatawag naton nga feathers so mao na siya isa na siya ka specialized integument and then for the horses paano man ko nakailang horses Nga nung nakayong mga kong horse, horse ni, bisag tiil na akong tanawon. Okay, another trivia question na na. Nga nung horseman ang naadere sa kaninga tiil. Nga nung dilim ako makaingon nga kabaw ni, dilim ako makaingon nga kanding ni, nga nung kabayo man dyan ni. So, inyo na na o oh, ansiran. So, this is what we call the hoof, ang specialized integument sa horse. So, for the sebaceous gland, actually there is a species Actually, sa layers of skin, there is what we call sweat glands. Wala lang na ito ma-emphasize diri ang picture niya. But the purpose of sweat glands is to eliminate body waste in the form of what? In the form of sweat. So, dili lang na ako in detail because it will give a clue sa isa na itong kakwestiyon gina. Not only that sa sweat gland but also sebaceous gland. So, mo ni siya ang mga specialized sebaceous glands kung sa sheep is makita natin sa infraorbital pouch. So, asa man ang infraorbital pouch sa sheep sa letter A. So, dere. 
and then sa interdigital pouch of the ship, uh, the ray interdigital between the two digits, and then inguinal pouch of the ship, the ray also sebaceous glands, horn glands of goat, so the ray, and then the carpal glands of pigs, so mao ni siya ang carpal glands of pigs. So, okay. Aside from which is the hyperkeratinized appendages. So, there are three common hyperkeratinized appendages in animals. So, the planum nasale, the planum rostrale, and the planum nasolabiale. Actually, the planum nasale, by the name itself, planum meaning, or it pertains to hyperkeratinized area. Nasale meaning, so, closely related sa nose or sa nostril. So, planum nasale, hyperkeratinized appendages in the nose. So, commonly makita natin sa dogs. Planum rostrale. So, planum rostrale. So, kung i-review natin ang anatomical terms uh, ng, kung nakabasa mo sa introductory sa akong ipabasang reference. So, the rostral part is usually pertains from the nose area. So, mauna siya. So, commonly, ang planum rostrale ay makita ang gidna sa baboy. And then, planum nasolabiale. So, not only the naso or the nose, but also the labiale. So, labiale meaning on sa? The lips. So, the hyperkeratinized appendages here are the nose and the lips. So, commonly makita ni siya sa baka and sa buffalo or sa mga kabaw. So, okay. That's it. So, before tama proceed sa sense organs, I would like to thank for those ng mga students nga mag-uhay pa lang na ako na post pero nagtanaw da yun and nag-answer. So, kailan naman kung kinsa mo, hopefully nga daghan mong na-learn sa sining subject. So, that's it for this time and hopefully you will gonna learn more sa follow-up na itong topic. And next topic will be about sense organs.